All right, today we're going to be looking at the Paint.net Animation Helper plugin. Now, it's been six years since I did the last video on this thing, and a lot has changed since then. So, with that, we're going to go and install the plugin. I'm going to show you how to do that. We're going to look at the features of the plugin, you know, including all the new stuff, how everything's changed. I'm just going to take you through all of that stuff. And hopefully, this tool will be useful to you. So, let's get started. And in order to do that, you want to go to pixelbyte.itch.io and then you want to find the paint.net animation helper plugin. We'll click on it and that'll take us to this nice page where there's screenshots and some extra information. Read it if you want. Um, and But what we want to do right now is click the download button. And now you see that um, you can optionally donate to support the development of this plugin. And what I would say that absolutely donate, but wait and download the plugin, install it, and use it and see if it's useful to you before you decide to do that. So you can always come back here and do that later. All right, so I've already downloaded it. So we'll go take a look at that. That is here in the downloads folder. And you can see right now, as of this recording, the latest version is 0 0.94. So let's extract that zip file. And I'm going to open up another folder while that is doing that. And we're going to go to the paint.net folder where, where paint.net is installed. So that's in C drive for me. Uh, program files. And finish program files. Uh, and paint.net. Now, when you're in this folder, you'll find that there is an effects folder. See me, I just went into the effects folder. Right now it's empty. That's where you install. That's where paint.net will pick up any effects plugins that are put here. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to we're going to take our paint.net animation effect DLL and we're just going to move it over here. And need administrative privileges, so we'll do that. And along with the DLL, you've got the copyright text which explains the copyright, the install text which explains what what we're doing right here, and then the version text file which gives you a history of the different versions of the plugin. So if you, you know, what has changed in between the versions. So that might be useful to you too. Uh, you can check that out if you need to. Okay. So we've got it installed. And one of the things we want to make sure when you install new plugins into paint.net, it doesn't pick them up until you run it again. So, you know, if you've got it open and you install or you copy DLLs into this folder, you'll want to close it and then reopen it so that it can see the plugins. So we'll open up paint.net here. And right now, of course, we have a blank page. I've downloaded a couple of files from opengameart.org so that we can look at kind of how this plugin works. So I'm going to select one of those. It's got a few characters in it, as you can see. Um, and pretty obvious that there's some animations going on here. We're taking take this guy right here. It looks like maybe probably these four frames are uh, walking. And of course if you're doing your own animations you know exactly where you're placing them and what they are and everything. So let's grab the select tool and we're going to select what what we call what we'll call the frame size that we want to uh, and that we want the, the plugin to basically animate and switch between the frames. So this looks, let's make it about that big. So what it, what the plugin will do is it'll take this frame size and then depending on how many frames you tell it, it will take this frame size and then it'll select that size again here and then go to the next one and the next one next, and it basically makes an animation. It just flips through these images quickly, right? So, so we, we're going to tell it what size we want approximately and then we can go to effects, animation, animation helper, and you can see that it has pulled in the size of this selection rectangle. But we can adjust that, and we need to, because it looks like this frame, this cell size for this thing, is, looks like it's about 32 by 32. Now, um, as you can see, uh, the number of frames has already been set to four here, so we're kind of, it's great, because it works. Um, now there's also the border, and you can have a border of zero, a border of whatever, but the border, when you put this, is the number of pixels in to skip between each frame. 
So some people like to put grids in their sprite sheet so that they can know exactly how big of an area they have to draw in for an animation. Well, you can with with the border uh, parameter, you can skip those the, the the grid pixels. But here we don't have any grid pixels, so we're good. Um, and then here's the frames per second, and you can note you notice that when I mouse over these, it will tell me what they're for. So if you haven't have a question about what a particular thing does, you can just mouse over it, and then it'll it will tell you um, what it does. Um, so frames per second, so we can increase or decrease the frame frames per second, and this is strictly for viewing purposes. So it just lets you see what's going on. So if you really have some interesting or some kind of glitch in an animation and you want to see what it is, you may want to slow it all the way down. And notice it will show you your current frame and of course frame 0 would be the first frame that you select, the starting frame, so 0, 1, 2, 3, you know. So you can at least, you'd know sort of which frame it is if you have any issues and you can go and look at that frame. So I'm going to pop that back up. Something else, we've got a zoom right here and so if we just had it at regular, regular size that's what it looks like so we can actually zoom in to get a better look at things something else you can do is you can change the background color so you can see what this sprite animation looks like with different background colors the R just resets it back to a default gray color um, and then as I played with these just a little bit earlier you can set the width and height of each frame using these and you can see you know at this point that doesn't make any difference because there's nothing else down there but I think it's probably 32 by 32. You can see, you'll see that coming. You can see that coming to play later. I mean, like if I did that, you see the width is now bigger, and it's actually too big for for the spacing between these. Now the columns is the number of columns each row has for the animation. So if I have, uh, say, this guy right here had four anima four um, four pictures, and then the rest of his animation continued down here and say he actually had six frames in that animation and then two of them were down here, I could say, well, there's four columns, but then there would be six frames. And note how, see how it's going here and then to this frame, to this frame, and to this frame. And so that's four columns. And so the next frame is going to be down, down below. So you can see how it switches. And that's really useful, especially if you get over to something that's like over in this area or something and then it, the, that animation continues on the next row you can um, you can adjust that as you need to and that comes in quite handy and another thing you can do is as you can see um, we were starting this animation frame is starting here and again what what the animation helper plugin will do is if you have an active selection it will pull in the location and the size of that selection and it says though it it figures that you probably want to use that as the starting frame but when you close it say I turn off that animation selection you know I can select other things but then I can dis disable the selection when I come back into the animation helper plugin it remembers the last settings that I had and as a matter of fact, a lot of these settings, it will remember between program runs. So if you close paint.net and open it back up, it will remember where you, it will remember these settings. So that's, that can be very helpful. Um, and then now let's take a look at uh, also the frame offset. So the frame offset is the offset from the leftmost pixel in, in the image of the first frame. So you can see it's like one one pixel over, two pixels over where this frame starts. And then it's the same for Y, but it's the top of the first frame. So it's from the top of this image all the way down to the top of the first frame. What's nice about this is, of course, we can adjust it. And you can see how we kind of change it that way. But if you have other animations, you can use these these incremental buttons that will increment by the frame cell size plus the border that you have so that you can move around easily much easier in your grid of animations to look at other animations of a particular character or whatever so you know if I did what uh, that's however many that is and if I say if I wanted to see his jump animation which I'm assuming that's kind of what this is the all I had to do was just 
move the frame, visit, you know, using this button and move the frame all the way over to where it where he jumps. And then I can of course go all the way back and we're good. Say I wanted to see this little guy run or walk. Um I should just be able to since I've got since I've got the cell size correct, the height of the of the frame and and the border which is 0, I can just do that. As a matter of fact, we can go up to this little bald strong naked guy up here um and switch between those easily. So that's quite helpful. But if I wanted to export, I can actually export these things to individual files or or strips or I can also export uh, a an animated gif. So let's check that out first. So you can there's different types here. I'll select we'll do an animated gif first. You can tell it I want to size to the zoom level, so that means this zoom, how big he is now, is how big they'll the animated gif will actually render. I want to loop him forever. Uh there's also an a, an option to use the black as a transparent color. I'm not going to check that. And let me say this, at this point, the animated GIF support at this point is sort of experimental. There might be some glitches and some other things in there that would be um that that I'm going to have to fix um and and I'll be working on that probably uh later. So the later versions of the plugin hopefully will have some improved capabilities there. And uh anyway, let's save this. And let's just call this We'll call it run and we'll go back in here and I'll show you what that looks like so there he is and of course the size of this is the size that um, that we've selected here it's a 32 by 32 and if I want to pull that open and there he is so animated gif so you can make animated gifs that way um, and the other thing we can do is we can export these as individual frames so notice I have four frames I want to export these as individual frames. I click the save button and I click a name I type a name for what I want it to be and it will export all of those frames as individual little files. So that can be useful depending on where you want to utilize these. Um so that's the other thing that it'll do and the last thing is you can export frames as a frame strip. Now the frame strip is basically it will export a row of uh, these pictures. So if I if I say columns per row is zero, then it will be it will export all of the animation frames that you have specified here as one row. So let's do that real quick. Show you what that looks like. See right here. The one, two, three, four, which is what I have, four frames, and it's all on one row. Now if I wanted that to be two rows I could go back, export frames, and I could say I want two columns per row. And since I have four frames, that's going to be two rows. So I can do that, and let's call this call this run two. And see, run two has the first two in the first row, and the second two in the second row. So you've got a little bit of flexibility there. Um, and then uh, you can also uh, see what the animation looks like with different background colors by utilizing these little buttons right here and then the R button just resets it to the standard gray color and also the other one I forgot to talk about was the ping pong so if I click this it will play this animation forward and when it gets to the last frame it will go backwards so some animations are made to ping pong like that and in order to view them you can just click this and uh, also, I don't remember if I mentioned it, but the current frame that's being played is also indicated down here so that you can know what frame you're on. Um, and with that, I think that's about it for this animation plugin, uh, at least for now. Uh, hopefully, uh, you know, some of the uh, more updated versions from now plug of the plugin will be will have even more capabilities. So I hope you found this helpful and I hope this plugin is helpful to you. Thanks for watching and see you next time.